What's going on YouTube? It's your boy TR. Today I'm going to be working on this Lexus GS400. You guys part in the garage. I had to make a space for this car. It's raining outside and uh, I had to move everything around to get it set up so I can work on it. So basically I'm going to be doing some maintenance stuff. Brakes, tie rod ends, and these are radius control arms I think or lower suspension arms something like that but on these i did get the, the toyota parts um and, and for these i i went a little cheaper i've got some good brakes i hate i went cheap on these and then got good parts for these but it is what it is if i have to replace these they're a lot easier within the year i'm going to put them on not not like a tutorial video just working on the car i know a lot of guys ask about what i'm doing with the car and at the end of the video, I'll tell you my experience of, of driving it for a, a little over a year and what I think about it and, and my plans on it. So let's get to it. In comparing the parts, um, this is an OEM part, Toyota part. I'm looking at this like, I imagine this, I don't know if this is a replacement or not sure if it, it came with the car. Um, but this part looks way better. I'll leave the description in below on the guy I got it from. Uh, he, he gave me an awesome deal on it, I think. But it does come straight from Japan, so you do have to wait. For shipping but I, the new part looks way better than the old one. Uh, let's get this bad boy on. Trying to record the best I can for you guys. Um, so I took the, all the bolts out this plate, and I also had to loosen this one up, kind of slide it in. Uh, these are stock parts, so I, I haven't changed anything on this car. And these are the two bolts I took out. Also, I'm going to be putting everything back on with the with a little bit of Loctite, the um, the breakable kind, the blue one. I think the factory had like a green Loctite on it. And yeah, I can't, I can't really record up on it here. Because I don't think I had a car jacked up high enough. And I can't get a good angle on it. So, put these parts back on. And then, uh, we can hopefully start tightening this thing up. At least on this side. <laughs> so, I think they showed this in the other video. These, I guess it's an upgrade. So, my control arm, I have a crescent wrench here. Because it has a flat part that you can kind of twist the arm into place so you can get the bolts in. At first, I wasn't doing this. I was trying to do it by hand and other methods. Then, like I said, I'm going to leave the video in the description below. Man, this is so much easier with the crescent wrench. 
and I think they maybe they updated this control arm to have this flat part here from the original so to make it a little easier to install um not bad at all man if you go through with it take your time once you do the first one the second one was a lot easier for me um but yeah not too bad not too bad of a job i think if i ran through front front to back doing everything with the tie rods and these radius control arms and also the brakes it, it, it's probably like a five six hour job so got the car back from the alignment shop goes down the road a lot quieter a lot straighter other things wrong with it uh, i get more into it in this video basically i'm going to tell you guys how it was driving this car for a little over a year and putting over 30,000 miles on it i'm at 282 i think and i i got the car around 248 1500 bucks and i want to say i put like 3500 in it with laboring parts and then this go around i probably put another i don't know a, another 300 in it in parts and i did the labor myself and a hundred dollars for a front end alignment so so far after going through this car through the process of basically when i bought it i sent it to a shop and let it set for a few months and let the guy just work out problems drove it all the problems weren't worked out so I, I brought it back and then got fuel pump and things put on and so from initially getting it i think i said i put 3500 in it where well, i'm thinking maybe i had 35 in it total with the car and the parts on it and this go around i'll probably put another 500 on it so i'm like four grand in overall thoughts on this i would if it was my choice, I'd probably get a lower mileage car. Um, not to say that a lower mileage car wouldn't give me many problems because you got to think these cars are 25 years old. Well, this one is 98, it's 25 years old, and the other ones are 20 years old and getting close to 25. So, you know, bushings and and, and things like a fuel pump or a timing belt. It's, it's just time for these things to be done and if you getting it from a buyer who hasn't done them then you're gonna have to do them uh it's just an old car a few old car problems but next i'll do the shocks on it uh, i'm gonna shoot you guys a video of me doing the shocks I, I may drop it a little bit but i'm living in atlanta and these potholes well i'm not gonna say atlanta like 20 minutes outside of atlanta but i'm in and out i, I go to the city and uh 20 to 30 minutes away from here away from the city of Atlanta and the, and the roads aren't good so the car sits great I even hit some potholes earlier man this week I think I chipped took a little chip out my wheel um but I, thoughts on lowering it I may go like an inch uh I think it's some teen springs and I may go with some K, KYB shocks on it so then I, I know I want to do the tent and also on the wheels I, I think I want to switch to some 18 inch wheels but it's been an awesome car for the price I got it at I couldn't beat it and it's been so reliable man after the you know the first initial few months of driving in and getting it sorted it's called this thing is so reliable and now I'm at the point of when I'm done with the suspension I may get the transmission flushed and the filter where well, the transmission fluid changed and the diff fluid changed. I think those popped up at things you need to do at 280,000 miles. I don't know how Lexus, I guess they know this car going to last a long time because they got a schedule of things to do at this mileage. But um, been an awesome car. On the interior, I, I do need to get a door accelerator and I want to get this seat, maybe buy a seat or get it redone but and i want to change this head unit i'm gonna to talk to somebody about changing that i don't know how to do it so i'll see what somebody say i've heard a lot of things about uh the climate controls not working if you do know anything about the, the head unit that i should use or the setup i should use to allow the, my climate control to work or uh you know if you in this georgia area around this metro area man come in 
And then maybe I can get that sorted because that does date the car. But like I said, we at 282. And it's been pretty freaking reliable. The V8 still is, is awesome. I'm enjoying the torque on it. Gas mileage is decent in my opinion. I'm getting around 20. I do a lot of highway driving on average. I do, I'm getting 20 miles per gallon. Oh yeah, one more thing. The wheel on the inside, the motors on the steering wheel, they went out. So I'm going to, you know, get that problem sorted out when I... You know, when I get a chance but overall man it's a great buy I think this Lexus GS400 is so underrated even the 300s um 300 with that 2JZ they so underrated it's such a nice car it's so comfortable the chassis is I feel like Lexus put a little flex in this chassis just to make it ride comfortable but um it's things you can do in the aftermarket to stiffen it up you can put coilovers on you can drive this, this car it can go from mile to wild I know some guys doing like the 2JZ GT swaps and stuff. Um, this it, it's a great platform, awesome car, very, and like I say, very reliable. Like, comment, subscribe.